How are you all? It is I, William Rungall Yellowhammer, here again to regale you with stories and such. <sighs> Today's a story stream, as I like to call these, or a night with a wizard. <laughs> Ladies, what is under my desk? I'm touching. Oh, it's a tome from your world. Get in the shelf where you need to be. Uh, yeah, okay. Um, so, I had to not stream yesterday. Sorry about that. Things came up at the last minute. And I couldn't do it. Sorry. And by things, I mean... Systems were down temporarily, if you know what I mean. Nothing wrong with my crystals, you know, my gaming crystal or what I'm talking to you on right now. Nothing was wrong with that. The magic wasn't coming through. So. <sighs> I'm going to do it. Down the wrong... T <coughs> smooth, 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 smooth. Ah. So, we will be picking up right where we left off in the last time we were reading the book, you know, the Batman book here over here, you know, Nightfall. So, we will be doing that. But I think, you know, some stories about me. Are in order. Let me tell you a story about when my father took me to the carnival. Now I told you another carnival story. Was this the first carnival? Was it that exact, you know, boardwalk carnival? Yes, it's the same one again. It's always there. It's just certain caravans come in, certain caravans come out. It opens up on you know, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. In your world, that's what it would be. So, the caravans come in, they set up, and when it's done, Monday, they leave. And then they come back. Because they go to other places around the island. Islands. They travel to different spots. So, um, at this point in time, I was probably seven years old. Yeah, young, very young. So this was 430... Almost 430 years ago. I'm like 429 for right now. So, imagine, it's hard to believe I can remember that far back. So my father, he was a mighty, mighty man. At this point in time, I was shorter than him. Well, yeah, I remember he was a dwarf. And, uh, my, my mother wasn't there that day. She was... She had other things to tend to. Not cooking or cleaning by any means, no. She had a... She was out with the ladies. Let's just say that. She was having her own time away from the family. You gotta have that once in a while. Then my father took me to the carnival. And like I said, my father was a mighty man. barrel-chested, big-shouldered, kind of like how I'm built, but just taller. You know, he was roughly, he was, he was over four foot five. So, 
he was kind of tall for a dwarf. He was like four eight, four nine. Anyways, I'm just a little guy, you know, just a little guy. And we're walking around, and he goes, "Beerium." I'm like, "Yeah, Dad." He goes, "Look at that over there." And I look over there, and it's a dunk tank. And in the dunk tank was a goblin. <laughs> so my father takes me over there and in the dunk tank there's a goblin and I looked behind the thing and there's just a bunch of goblins behind there and I'm thinking are they going to attack but then I notice they're all in chains and I'm like good good because Everybody in my world hates goblins. They hate them. They're disgusting creatures. So my father gets up there and he he, he pays his his three copper sickness to throw the ball at the target. Now, mind you, it turns out that this uh, thing dunk tank wasn't exactly for um, fun purposes. It was actually for executions. Down in the bottom of the dunk tank was a very caustic liquid. They call it acid. So... As I'm looking at the dunk, there's just all these skulls floating in the acid. And then they go and they, they bring up the goblin. And he, they sit him down. Or it down. And he's sitting there all chained up. Cursing and cussing at everybody. These were criminals. And, uh... Apparently that these goblins were uh, all caught in a cave by the guards or the sheriffs um, of our area uh, because they were looting, pillaging, and doing other despicable, horrible things to women and children and some men. Let's not go in the detail. So they were up there and my father's there, and you know, my father was a big, strong dwarf. And, um, very athletic. Very athletic. Worked at a mine, was a warrior. Still, at that point in time, was swinging an axe and a hammer around, you know, going into battles. Anyways, he gets up there, he picks up the wooden ball. The goblin's like, you! Look at you, shorty! Now, mind you, this goblin is probably two inches shorter than my father. He's probably more like my height at this point in time. He's like, look at you! You have your big nose! <laughs> look at your freak son! And at that point, my father just looks at the, you know, the executioner and goes... Here, I'll give you a few more balls. And he plops a giant basket down full of wooden balls. And my father didn't need to. He hurled the first one, knocked the, the <laughs> goblin right into the tank. Goblin screams in, in agony, and, and then he disintegrates. So then, my, so then they bring up the next one. And my father looks down at me and goes, Would you like to... Uh, Throw the ball. And I'm like, oh, sure, Dad. And then I throw it. And of course, I missed the first one. I'm a little kid. I'm seven years old. You know, I'm a little kid. And then the goblin laughs at me, calls me a freak.
And at that point in time, I was learning magic. And I had uh, learned geomancy pretty good at the, by that point. I was pretty good at that. I mean, now it's... I mean, I was able to, you know, pick rocks up, you know, you know, control them, mold them into weapons at that point in time. So there's gravel everywhere, and I'm like, I'm angry, and then I start doing this... You know, then all these pebbles start rising up. And my dad's like, oh, no. And my dad just steps back and he looks at the executioner and goes, you might want to step back. And then I just barrage this target <laughs> with just an endless amount of pebbles. And just... Bah, 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 bah. And the goblin just goes down and then burns. And then I start, then I start screaming and yelling and yelling. I want another one. My dad's like, no. Let other people have some fun. And I'm like, okay. And then we go and we move on. Yeah, I know it's a grim story and I know it's about me killing a goblin, but fun times. Fun times. <laughs> So, at that point in time, we move on, and there was an animal act going on, and it was it was it was a Drake tamer, which at that which at that point in time at this moment, my love of Drakes started. That's why I got two of them, Uthar and Luthar. They're my babies. I got two of them. They're they're in their stable right now, sleeping. It's late. They were they were playing all day out in the out in the yard. It, it's kind of funny seeing these giant, these huge hulking, four-legged, you would say, giant lizards, romping around like puppies in the yard, playing. <laughs> they're brothers. And. uh... I make some money on the side studying them out. And, uh, oh, trust me, they, they enjoy it. Anyways. So, so, at that point, and then I see this Drake doing these awesome tricks. And I'm not just talking about, oh, he leaped from one end to the other, you know. No, this Drake started walking around and citing autographs. This Drake, which you could teach Drakes how to read and write and do somewhat speech. Because they're kind of like a dragon, they're not they're like a lesser dragon. Let's just say that. Um, they're not or they're like dragon kin. All right? They're they're, they're not uh, they look like dragons, but they are not fully... They're more animalistic than anything, but there's that part in the brain that can be, you know, clicked on. So I'm watching this, and I'm like, oh my god. I couldn't speak properly back then. I was like, oh my god. I'm watching, he's walking around, he's like... Mind you, it was very unlegible. But still, a Drake walking around on his back legs, signing pieces of paper. And he did other things too. He would do backflips and he'd catch a ball, a ball in his mouth while doing a backflip. Um, you know, balance on his tail and spit in a circle and, you know, stuff like that. The trader did really good with him. You know, and then. He got to come up and he got to meet the Drake. And I gave him a hug. And then the Drake licked me on the face. Thank God it wasn't an acid Drake where they lick acid from their mouths. So it's just your standard one.
So, that was that. And then we went and we had some mutton. We had some mutton. My dad got himself an ale and he got me some uh, juice. Because I wasn't allowed to drink at that point in time. Because I was uh, just, just a youngin. We were sitting there we're eating, and then a fight breaks out. Between a dwarf and another dwarf, because it was mostly dwarfs on the island. There was humans. Don't get me wrong. There was humans. There were some elves. Um, but it, this was two dwarves fighting, and you can only imagine what that's like. That's scary. My dad's like, "Okay, we need to leave," because at that, because dwarves, it doesn't just start off as a fist fight. It starts off as a fist fight, you know, punching. But then the hammers and axes and clubs start coming out, and then it's just then then it's then, then it just becomes a bloodbath. And I, I, so we took our mutton and our beverages, and we left at that point in time. And then here comes the the authorities, you know, the guards or whatever, and then they're like coming in there, they're knock them out and they drug them away and took them to the jail for overnight. They didn't really didn't break any laws. They didn't kill anybody. They were just fighting and causing a ruckus. So they just... <sighs> so... Then after that point, we stayed uh, another hour or so. Then I, I was getting tired. But it's like okay, let's let's go. So we go and we head back, and he un takes the oxen, and we get in the car, and I fall asleep on the way back home. And then I wake up, and my mom and her friends are there, talking and gossiping. And then she goes, "Oh, you're back already?" He goes, "Yeah." And then of course I go, and after that I wake up still in the cart. I mean, parents would just leave you in the cart back then if you would fall asleep. Now, oh lord. I don't want to do that anymore. So. Fuzzy there. Okay. When I come in, I'm like, Mom! Mom! I saw a drink. I killed a goblin. She's like, you killed a goblin? My father had to explain about the whole story that I already told you. And I said, and then... Then we went and I got some mutton, and I had and I had some juice, and a fight broke out. And she looks over at my dad. He goes, "She looks over at my dad and goes, I, I didn't start it, because he's a notorious fight starter." <laughs> yeah, that was my dad. So yeah, that that was a very fun moment in my life when I was a kid. It was not one of the few moments. There's many moments of me and my dad just hanging out. Um, this was before my brothers and sisters came into... Because I'm seven years older than my... Uh, br my uh, brother after me. We had... Uh, I had three brothers and two sisters. Well, there were there were six of us. Uh, and they're all still alive too. They didn't die because everybody, their kids, their grandkids, me, all of my lineage, all inherited the elven immortality. All of them. Our family reunions just keep going on and on and on. Grandchildren, great-grandchildren, great-great-grandchildren, great-great-great-grandchildren. <sighs> I had 75 kids. My brother had 15. And then, you know, so on and so forth. So we have a lot of big family, big family. I think most of my family, and there's just an island just dedicated to us 
over there. And not every nobody marries within the family. Trust me. <laughs> we all know each other. Um, there isn't none of that weird stuff that goes on in here. They all know, and then all well, the kids, as of tradition, go off to the other islands, and they move away from the island, and then, like I, like what I did, and then just I have nieces and nephews and grandchildren that live here in Morskar. One of them lives right here in the village and visits quite often. A niece, a nephew, and three of my grandkids live in the surrounding areas right around here. So they come and they visit quite often. And it's great. I love when they come and visit. But they, but they know when I'm busy. Um, they don't... Uh, bug me if they see the green and weird color smoke coming from out of the chimney they you know eh, let's leave Uncle Billy and our grandpa alone he's working <laughs> they, they don't want to get blown up which has happened quite a few times in my laboratory yeah. they see that going and they're don't come in. <laughs> How long have I been streaming? Oh, 21 minutes. Oh, 22 now. All right. Got this the other day. It's a neat little thing. They a little like marble right here. And then they have this red leathery thing right here. Then you take it, it hoops around, and you set it right there. And then, boop! Your bottle is sealed. Then you gotta, gotta get it, kinda gotta get it right. Okay, and then, boop! There. It's a nice bottle. Set it here on my side of my desk. Oh, I got some things from the Earth realm recently. Where is it? Ah! Oh, wait, that's not. There it is. It's a statue of some sort. Right here. I got. Very nice. I had one earlier. It's from one of your warriors from your planet. But I had no idea that you had animal warriors. I mean, look at that. They're guardian of your galaxy. Wow, that's a very prestigious uh, title. Well, let's let's open this. Oh, there went my pipe. Hold on a minute. Sigil. Hey, I think I know what this is for. I'm going to be getting another one of these next month. They they, they, they always send you a garment of some, a top garment of some sort, you know, with, with, with like this embroidery on it from stuff from the Earth Realm on it. And they always send you other, like, like, 
like almost these pins like I got right here. I said you these too. These are awards, so I'm like, what am I getting awarded all the time? You know? Oh well. You know, I'll, I'll take them. <laughs> so, look here. It's this little commemorative thing. Oh, he has guns. Want one of those. I mean, I know I could shoot fireballs out of my hands and lightning and amongst other devastating things. But, it would be cool just to hold something bang, bang, bang. You know what I mean? They just look... I would want these right here. If those are real. Why am I so yawning? I'm usually just burping my eyes. Burping, burp, 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 burping. But I'm yawning like crazy right now. Wait a minute. Here. Oh. Wait a minute. I'll be right back. I got this one last month. Whew. Does it do what I think it does? Oh, oh. oh, would you look at that? That's going to be it. You know, quite. Um. Beautiful when it all comes in. When I get the other ones in, slap, slap. That is pretty darn cool. I like that. I'm going to go put it back up. good stuff also uh, my new sword yeah doom walker cool thing about this daggers in the hilt I got this off of a dead necromancer. Well, I killed him. Was it Magog? It was not Magog. Talk to me, you're good. So, yeah, this is Doom Walker. A weird blade. But, yep. Oh, it's a heavy sword. It is nothing magical about it at all. And I examined it, so it's just a sword. But man, is it a good one. You hack down a tree with this thing. Also, my mother sent me a weapon from the islands. She still lives over there. She comes over about oh, oh, about three times a month. But this was she had shipped to me. Not this. This is my staff. <sighs> but this. She sent this to me. Oh, 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 man. Look at this thing. Now, I might enchant this thing. Um, I might. 
I might not. I might just... And if I do, it'll be that it doesn't wear down. <laughs> you know, I don't want him to be like, I oh, fire. Fire. I'll probably make this an indestructible weapon. And then I can just, with my normal abilities, envelop it in flame or electricity, because I really don't need to enchant it that way, but I think I can make it an indestructible weapon. I think that's what I'll do. Um, but yeah, it's it's a good old fashioned, as you would call it, a board with a nail in it. But this is a bat with a nail with nails in it. Look at that. I don't want to get it too close to the crystal because I might be stupid. And but yeah, all the way around. You got the one right there. The spike on top, so you just bleh, bleh, bleh. You bash the crap out of people. I love it. Haven't gotten to use it yet, but this this uh, coming Friday, me and the king are going goblin hunting. So, yeah, gonna do some goblin slaying. Ooh, it was storming. Um. Not too long ago, outside, I think it might still be, gee, I hope it doesn't hit any um, murals. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's already happened. So, or at least some more drink. to do this so just give me a minute here I, I know it's not a pummel but it uh it's more of a chopping thing I'm doing in here on oh okay never mind uh, uh, let's see what our genie's doing I gave him a little net that I can hold it on here for him hey genie floif Floyve. Are you in there? His name is Floyd. People thought I called him Floyd. No, it's Floyd. Floyd! You in there? Leave me alone. What, why? I'm trying to sleep. Oh, okay. There. He, he's on my desk. He doesn't like ever coming out of his bottle. I think he's come out maybe two or four, you know, four times. Uh, at the most. Um, but I told him, like, hey, you're inside. So, this is my staff. Right here. 
I'm going to be getting uh, something put on the top. I have this owl statue that I could put on there. Or, or I don't know what I would put on there. Let's see who's in the chat. Um, nobody, nobody. I said. I said. Anyways. If I could find my pen, I would do another scroll. One that would help with diarrhea. Or the... Piles. Trust me, you don't want... Piles. Oh, oh man! If you get piles, all you do is you, you, you got to have a pillow on your butt. It just hurts. You call them hemorrhoids, which that sounds painful, but piles sounds hilarious though. What do you have? I have the piles. Piles of what? You don't want to know. Piles. But I have found a cure or a treatment to get rid of the piles. I found an herb that we have here in our world. Well, you have it too. But you call it, I call it Masuna root. Or Masuna. It's, it's a plant. But in your world, you call it witch hazel. And how did I find out that this would work? Well, it doesn't just help with piles. It helps with all inflammation. And let's just say I didn't invent it. It's been used quite a long time here, Masuna root. Um, or not Masuna root, but Masuna, the plant. When I keep saying root, it's not a root. It's a a plant. I'm thinking of Suna root. Must Suna is a plant. Suna root from the Suna plant. Okay, that's for dietary. Okay, um, Masuna plant. You you call it witch hazel in your world. Um, dwarves have been using it for years for their muscles. You know, aching muscles. They go, they turn it into a salve. And then they, you know, like rub it on their muscles. And it does good for inflammation. But, one day, I, I don't know what I ate, but I ended up getting piles because it was hurting coming out. And I'm like, okay, so obviously back in the back carriage here it's inflamed so I was like I wonder if this will work what I did was I distilled the salve into a liquid and I thought just rubbing a eh, I want something pasty back there what I did is I did that and I soaked it in a linen cloth just dipped it in the, in the liquid and it up and then tucked it up there. Not just just in between the cheeks. Boy, did it work quick. Also put a little bit of astringent in the, in, in the, into the mix to uh, clean it. You know what I mean? Make it clean. Boy, does it work and it works quick. I'm selling it now. You know, the liquid form. And I, and, I, and I sell five rags with it. And I tell people, wash the rags. 
after use. And it should be within a week, it should be completely gone. Within the first, depending on the severity. But usually, it don't take a week. It takes like a day or two. Depending on the severity, to some people it takes a week. It's, or, you know, up to five days. But within the first initial thing, oh, do they feel better? They could actually sit. <laughs> it doesn't. They liked it. The king had it at one point. And he, oh boy, did he love it! You know, I told him watch his diet because you need to eat roughage. You need to eat fruit, so it, you don't have hard poos. You know, I know this is a weird thing for me to talk about, but I, I do these sorts of things. I mean, like I said, I'm an all-around wizard. Not only do I have to, do I do you know entertainment, you know magic, but I also and alchemy, but also I, I I do medical too. I mean, whether through magic or through herbal supplements and stuff like that. Helps out. Alchemist, herbalist, magician, you know. An all around jack of trades. Master of some. <laughs> hey, in our world, I found out, you know, if you bathe regularly, you won't get sick as much. Wash your hands. And it's helped out, and I've gave soap to the peasants and stuff. And their health has been improving in this area, at least. I don't know what it's like in other places, but, you know, from washing their hands and their bodies, plagues have gone down. Also, I said, burn your garbage. And when I mean their garbage... I mean, I don't mean like food scraps. Well, actually, yes, food scraps. Get rid of them. Keeps rats down. I said if you have peels from fruit or whatever, bury them in the ground because they'll go away after a while. Well, they've started doing that. Their health has been improving, and I said, don't crap and don't defecate. I say crap, but they wouldn't know what that means. Don't defecate where you drink. All right? Some of them have to get their water from the river. And then they take a... a, a they defecate in the river. It's like, don't do that. It's where you wash your clothes. It's where you bathe. That's where you get water to drink. Some of you don't do it. And don't use urine to clean things. Because it ain't clean. It makes it more dirty. Yeah. So here, use this stuff. And I gave them soap. I studied your soap from your world. And we had all the, uh, the natural soaps of your world. We had all the elements here to do it and I did it and, and I make money off of it yes I'm the rich because they smelled too they just had perfumes to make them smell at least a little better and they stunk too ugh nobles I know mean, you could consider me a noble but I'm I, I, I mean okay I have a title alright royal wizard Alright, I mean, I don't wear these just for ornamental reasons here. <sighs> this here signifies that I am the wrong way. This here is for bravery. This here is for being hurt in battle. You can't really see it. It's the bl broken black sword. This here is for medical you know, helping out, you know, with wounded soldiers. Over here is for guarding while transporting. The cart-ter uh, award. 
recording things. I mean, I just say, hey, pay a dragon. Load him up and he'll take you there and you ain't got to worry as much. <laughs> <coughs> Hold on here. Grab a thing down here. <coughs> oh. Ooh. That is better. Sorry about that. I have some rags over here just for, you know, handkerchiefs. That occasion. Um, anywho. So, yeah. So, you know, I, I do have a title. And so, I guess that would make me a noble in some way. I mean, I work for the king. But I don't consider myself a noble. I mean, they call them peasants. I call them people. But... I, I try to help the masses. So some people are like, why? I'm like, because they're people like us. I mean... I try to help out. I mean, I try to help them in any way I can. I mean, I give them free soap. I and mean, I give them free scrolls that help them in the, in, in the hot summer. I mean, try to better their lives as much as possible. So, forty seven minutes of talking. Wow. I just yammer on and on and on, don't I, people? <laughs> now, um, I think I've talked enough about the crap that happens here and all other things, you know, of talking about me. Um, oh, one more thing. I have a new apprentice now. Um, he's uh, he's five years old. He's learning. Good kid, good kid. Uh, little odd though. Little odd. A little odd. Um, family moved from Sarthos and they're nobles of course well they paid me lots of money to teach him magic but all he's been doing is I was teaching him simple fire magic and well, I've done this before shot fire out of my butt but it seems he does it a lot They didn't want the school, you know, finding out that he had the ability to do magic. Well, they, they went looking for him, and then he found out that I had a hold of him. And they're like, nope, 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 nope. We don't want our heads blown off. I'm like, yeah, scoot along. I have a small school, but they're taught a heck of a lot better here. Than they would be over there in Runeval. I wasn't taught by Runeval. I was taught by my grandfather, who was taught by his father, who was taught by his grandfather, and so on and so forth. So, and I wasn't restricted on what I could learn. I wasn't restricted on anything. I learned freely. I learned a lot of stuff that you shouldn't learn, but I didn't really pursue those because I didn't want nothing to do with it. You know, a lot of the dark stuff. I don't know. I mean, I know how to do it. You know, I mean, I'm jack of all trades, but I don't use it because I don't want to. If I have to, 
I mean, I don't, even, even if I have to, I try not to. So, even though I have friends that, and acquaintances that do, but, Magog. <laughs> uh, so yeah, so he's just been fooling around a little lately. He's five, so I, I cut him some slack. He's just, he thinks it's hilarious to shoot a fireball out of his butt when he farts. He just finds it the most thing. This five-year-old boy, of course, he's going to. Those parents came by and they're like, well, what has he learned? I said, well... I said, Olslin. That's his name, Olslin. I said, uh, show your parents what you've learned so far in the month that you've been here. So he did a couple of levitation tricks, you know, lifting up things, and, you know, a little bit of, you know, making his fingers tingle and shoot a little bit of lightning out. You know, he's just starting out. I mean, he's advancing nicely. He's right on schedule what he should be learning. I mean, he's no prodigy. But he's also no slouch either. He's, he's right on time of what he should be catching on. So that's good. So then I'm like, okay, show him the grand finale, Oslin. So Oslin shoots, you know, out of it, you know, a little fireball out of his finger and hits a target. You know, levitates some rocks and stuff. Edelbrunks does other things, makes a bird appear. Really, all it is is a teleportion spell. There was a bird outside, and it poofed and poofed into his hand. You know, that, that sort of thing. I mean, we can't, wizards can't create things out of nothing. We're not a god. You know? Not even close. So, then the grand finale happened. I sat up the target. He bends over, whips down his pants, and shoots the fireball out of his butt right at the target. His parents look at me. I'm like, he did that on his own. I didn't teach him that. I said, he's advanced in this pyromancy. I mean, he shot a fireball out of his butt. That's to say he excels in that. But he can shoot a fireball out of his butt. So can I. Ah. Sorry about that. Um, so. Yeah. But I'm getting paid 5,000 Cygnus a month for teaching him, so. Remember, I charge the rich. A lot. They could afford it. There was some peasant that wanted to learn magic. I'd teach him for free. What makes him more what makes him even more special than than a noble? They're both people. Now, I don't besmirch nobles. Some of them were born into it. Some weren't. Some earned their title. They earned it. Through business or charity or being a hero. You know, they earned their way to the top. I earned my way to the top. And I help others to earn their way to the top. There's some that were born, even even the ones that were born into it. Not all of them are. There, a lot of them are. A good amount of them are humble, but there's some. There's some. Olson. Olson, son. I mean, parents are. Well. They can be nice. They're nice to me. 
because I'm teaching their son. How to uh, do magic. They're also nice to me because I'm a wizard. And I can nuke their head if I wanted to. Just blow their head up. So they're not real they're really nice to me. Anyways. So yeah, I I don't hate nobles by any means. I mean, even on the island my family were considered nobles. I mean, even though they we don't really have titles on the Indel Isles, to, to be quite honest. It's a free society. Um, there are rich, and there are poor, and there are middle class. And there are upper middle class, lower middle class. So, it's all around. I mean, you got the workers, you got, you know, you got the, the you know, there's, there's mines there. My family owned mines on the island. There are mines on the island, on the big one, the big island. That's the one they own. So they, my family was well to do. But did they act like it? No. No. In your world, you could call us rednecks. <laughs> you know, blue collar kind of people, as you would say. Sons of the soil, I guess. Um. But yeah, I, I, I really don't. I don't. Think that you should eat the nobles. I don't think that. I mean, because a lot of them worked to where they got. There, there's one noble that lives around here. He started off as a peasant. And he worked his way to the top. He started, he got five chickens. And he started selling the eggs. And then, from those signals, he was able to buy more chickens, and then sell more eggs. And then he bought more chickens, and, started, and sold those eggs. And it just went up and up and up and up. And he started, you know, moving up in the world. And he may, and he owns the largest chicken farm. In all of Morskar. He started off with just five chickens. Now he has thousands. It just, it just keeps coming in and coming in. And he's very well to do now. He's a very rich man. But he worked his way up to that top. It took him years. Now he don't really ever have to work his entire life again. But he's still out there with his workers... Gathering eggs. Didn't forget where he came from. And I respect that. But like I said, there's some nobles that were brought up the way they were. They were born into it. And they just automatically, because they were born, they got their title. Um, but they're still very good people. They're very charitable. And they help out the poor. Um because they don't want to be that themselves. I mean, they have the ability to help, so they do it. And then you have some that are, well... Yeah, we're, we're gonna, well... I'll get into one. I'm not gonna mention any names. But this guy will just... If you're not wearing the latest in Tharthothian fashion, which I'm not from Sarthos, but uh, but he comes here quite often. It's like, man, nobody from Morskar is going to dress like you. These are rugged people that live here. So, though he, he he's in our he's in the town here. And I'm walking, and I knew it was a Sarthosian just by how he dressed. It's just, it's easy to pick them out of a crowd. I mean, the Morskarians are very, they're rugged people, but even our nobles are like, they, <clears throat> so, 
I mean, he's walking. And then, then he sees, you know, this poor homeless man on the side of the road, and he spits at him. Well, I run over, well, I run over there, and I, I look at the man on the ground. I've never seen him before. He must have wandered in to the town. You know, who knows what his situation was. So I gave him 300 signals. Just right there. There you go, man. Go get yourself something to eat. Go get some new clothes. Go get a... Get a house. So then he looks at him and goes, Why would you do that? I said, because everybody needs to excel in life. Everybody needs at least the minimum comforts of life. And then he spit on me. Now, I don't dress fancy by any means. I mean, I'm basic black robe, you know, boots, brown pants underneath the robe because I just I like to keep my legs warm. Uh, then he noticed what I wear on these robes and on my hood. He saw the Dragon Rider necklace. He saw a family sigil, which shows that I come from a prominent family. Maybe not here in Morskar, but or there in Sarthos, but come from a prominent family. And then he saw the medals. Especially this one. He saw this one and was like, Oh no. I'm like, Oh yes. I work for the king. I'm his right hand man. I, if he's out and about, people answer to me. Then he saw that I was a war veteran. Uh, that one um, I was in battle and then I'm care for others that I know anatomy that's what this is and then I a transporter he's like I'm so sorry I'm so sorry I'm so 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 sorry and I'm like no 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 and I took full advantage of this, and I'm like, kneel. So he's down on his knees. And then I turn around, lift my robe, and I fart right in his face. And he's just groveling. And I'm like, get up. Get up. I'm like, get out of here. Go, wh wh who are you here to see? He was here to see one of the Dukes. And I'm like, oh, okay, follow me, you turd sucker. Come on. I took him there. And then this 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 duke, this this noble, he's a good dude. Not not the one I'm talking, but the one he went to go see. This guy's a good dude. Very charitable. Helps out the homeless. He opened up a a flop house. You could probably say for them to come into. Um. Uh, why I just did that? Hi. Uh, so, he went and visited him, and we're sitting there, and he's sitting there. Oh, yes. <laughs> Ernie, he was a cousin. And, uh, nobleman, uh, what is his name again? Nobleman Balthazar. Yes, that's his name, Balthazar. He's sitting there, and, and I go, Oh, I, I met him, I met your your acquaintance here. Because they were, they were discussing dealings. I said, Oh, yeah, I met him while I was out on the street. He goes, Yes. I said, You want to know what he was doing when I uh, met up with him? He goes, Yeah, sure, tell me. I said, Oh, yeah, he was kicking dirt and spitting on a homeless man. And Balthazar turns, looks at this 
So I don't even learn, learn his name. I don't care. Looks at him. Leaps out of his chair and punches him dead in the face. And says, the revealing line goes, you're not getting your land back. In fact, I'm going to see forth that you get your title stripped out of Morskar. So now this guy isn't even a noble here in Morskar. So when he comes here, he's dirt, basically. What he would think. Dirt. Uh, <laughs> he's only a noble in Sarthos. He's not... Nobility doesn't transfer over anymore. Here, at least. So. <laughs> oh, it's so... He should have saw that punch. He just leaped right over off his chair and was like, Boom! From a sitting position. Like what I'm doing right now. Just lunge. It was pretty cool. Sitting there drinking my tea. And I'm like... Or drinking my tea. I'm like... It's a good show. Because he just hit him once. It was, it was repeated time. It was repeated. Uh, so, after an hour of rambling... I'll clean that. I am hungry. Well, let's read our story. Let me grab it. Over here on the shelf. Is this it? Uh, no, that's the second one. Oh, yeah, I have a second one. All right, let's find the page here we left off on. And, um, here we are. You know what? We'll finish this later. Right now, I got some more stories I got to tell you. So, oh crap, I didn't even change the thing. This isn't Greedfall. <laughs> oh, excuse me. I'm so sorry. There we go. Into the bucket. <laughs> Done. All right, now, I'm a man of good humor. I'm a man of dark humor. I'm a man of politically incorrect humor. I'm just a man of humor. I like the funny, and I like to do the funny. I like to tell jokes. I like to... So I'm going to tell you some jokes. 
Some people might consider them inappropriate. Some. They're not... Alright. I'm not going to go into too many gross ones. Alright. Joke one. There's a father and son. And they went camping. They do all the other camping things that you would do. They, 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 they chopped wood for the fire. They set up their tents. They went fishing and hunting and you know, it was just a couple of days of just good old fun. And then one day they're sitting there and they're around the campfire. They're eating their dinner and they're telling stories. And the father goes, all right, son, time to hit the hay. And tomorrow we're going to pack up everything and head home. And he's like, okay, dad. So in the middle of the night, father wakes up and He's looking up at the sky. And uh, he wakes his son up and he goes, What, Dad? So, the father goes, When you look up, up those stars, what do you think? He says, Well, Dad, uh, it's a very deep question. He goes, I know, I know. Well, when you see those stars, what do you think? He goes, Well, Dad, when I see those stars, I think that we live in a very complex universe that just didn't you know happen through happenstance i i think that there is a creator out there that created all things and and, and created us and he goes on and on and on the father goes well that's very nice son and you're a very deep person and then the son goes well dad when you look up at those stars what do you think dad sits there and looks over at him and says i think somebody stole their tent Here's that one. All right, here's another one. One's a little raunchy, but not too bad. What do you call it when a hooker farts? A prostitute. <sighs> yeah. There's this guy walking down the street. It's night, you know, night time. It's just the lights, you know, the gas lights are lit. The oil lamps are lit. And he's walking, and then all of a sudden, a vampire, or Dracula from your world, jumps out at him. And he goes, I am going to suck your blood. And the guy goes, no, 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 I'm turning into a vampire. And Dracula steps back and looks at him and goes, I haven't even bitten you yet. And the guy goes, Oh, I'm sorry. I uh, I suffer from premature ejaculation. Yeah. Another pun. <laughs> yeah. <sighs> this one I don't really understand myself, but I was told this by somebody from your world. And uh, I didn't get it, but, you know. Why is there always two people? Two people behind the counter at a convenience store. I wish I knew what that was. But why is there always two people behind the counter at a convenience store? One is to ring you up. You give the money to them. And then the other guys to tell you what the other guy just said. I don't understand it myself, but evidently it has something to do with foreigners or whatever. I don't All right, this one, make some of the guys wince. Made me wince when I heard it. This guy goes to the doctor and he says, Doc, I have a problem. The doctor goes, what? Man takes down his pants and shows the doctor, his little friend down there. The doctor goes, oh my word, 
Oh, it's all twisted and gnarled. And he says, that's why I'm here. Can you do something about it? And the doctor takes a look. He goes, okay. I'm going to ask you some questions. Two. Two questions. He goes, okay. Do you have trouble going to the bathroom? You know, going, you know, relieving yourself. The guy goes, no, I have no issues there. He goes, okay. He goes, the, how is your love life with your wife? The guy says, we have a perfect love life. It's perfect. No, no issues. She loves me. I love her. But, you know, he goes, all right. He goes, so, you know, it's not, not a palace. That's supposed to look like a palace. You know what I mean? And, you know. So, uh, if it works properly, then who cares? The guy says, well, you know, for vanity's sake. You know, I kind of want it to look normal. You know what I mean? He goes, well, you know, if we do, if we work on it, it might not work anymore. It'll look proper, but it won't work. Maybe. The guy says, well, I don't want to risk that. I'll see you later, Doc. So, he left. A couple months later... He comes back again to the doctor and he says, Doc, Doc, you would not believe this. The doctor goes, what? Guy woofs down his pants and shows the doctor his little friend. The doctor goes, it's completely straightened out. What happened? He goes, okay, okay, hold on. What happened? Because it was all gnarled and twisted last time I had the pleasure of seeing it. He goes, what did you do? He goes, all right. He goes, after I left your doctor's office, I went to the market. Or store, as you would say. And he says, so I went to relieve myself. And he says, and I'm standing there and I'm going to the bathroom. And, and uh, see this gentleman next to me tap his. And he got done. And I was looking at him and I said, wait, why'd you tap that yours? He goes, so I don't soil my linens. He says, and why are you looking at me? Says, oh, well, other than that. So, he says, so ever since then, I tapped mine, and I ended up tapping it back into shape. He goes, the doctor goes, so what were you doing before? The guy says, I was doing this. Yeah. Yeah. Not a bright man, was he? So those are my jokes. And I believe this is the end of the stream. I'd like to thank you for the minimal people that came. And this will be exported to YouTube. So, always keep your head up. Always keep your eyes forward. Walk down the straight and narrow path. Because it always leads to the right place. Have a good night. Have a good day. Wherever you are. Goodbye.